Sound is a wave, that is, it's a vibration that travels through a medium, like air or water. If you drop a rock into a bucket of water, you disturb the surface of the water and create ripples or waves which travel away from the impact. The ripples cause the height of the water to change, going up and down, as the wave moves away from the splash. These waves are visible with our eyes and have a number of properties. They have a maximum point, called a crest, a minimum point, called a trough, they have a wavelength, which is the distance from a particular crest to the next one. They have an amplitude, which is the distance from the center line to the top of a crest or to the bottom of a trough. They have a frequency, which is the number of waves that pass a fixed point per second. They have a speed, which is just wavelength times frequency. And they have a direction. Sound waves are similar. If you clap your hands in a quiet room, you will disturb the air and cause ripples of air to move away from your hands. The clap disturbs the air molecules near your hands. These molecules then bounce into other nearby molecules and so on, so that the disturbance moves through the air like a wave, a sound wave. But sound waves are different to water waves in one respect. Water waves are transverse. This means that as the wave is moving in one direction, say to the right, it's creating a disturbance in the perpendicular direction, so up and down. Sound waves, on the other hand, are longitudinal. This means that as the wave is moving in one direction, say to the right, it's creating a disturbance in that same direction, so left to right. A transverse wave coming from behind lifts you up and then drops you down like a boat in the ocean while a longitudinal wave coming from behind pushes you forward and then pulls you back, like a spring. But when representing sound waves graphically, it's easier to draw them as transverse waves, so that it just looks like a regular sine graph. But really, this sine wave is the motion of the air particle as it travels through time. Another way of presenting this is that the low points on the sine wave are where air particles are spread far apart, and the high points on the sine wave are where air particles are bunched together. Sound waves cause changes in air pressure as particles bunch together and spread apart. Now we can't see these ripples, but our ears can hear them. When the waves reach our ears, the air pressure goes up and down, and this makes our eardrums go in and out at the same rate. Our brain analyzes these signals and interprets them as sound. Otherwise, sound waves have all the same features as water waves. They have a speed, which is naturally the speed of sound, or roughly 343 meters per second through air. And they have a frequency and a wavelength, which determines the pitch of the sound, where the shorter the wavelength, the higher the frequency, and the higher the pitch of the note. And they have an amplitude, which is the energy of the wave, and affects the volume of the sound, though it's actually a bit more complex than this. In the next few videos, we'll go into these topics in a bit more depth.